Let's take a look at the process for making graphs in Google Sheets. Now the first thing we'll have to do is set up our data in a table. Now in Google Sheets, it's helpful if you put the x-axis over here on the left-hand side and the y-axis to the right. The formula will automatically recognize the x-axis on the left and the y-axis on the right. So if you set it up that way, you'll need to highlight the cells, go to insert chart, and then you're going to be looking for a scatter chart. So we want to go down and find the scatter chart. Now sometimes we do use the other styles of charts. For instance, we may use some bar graphs column graphs for different things, but whenever we're comparing two variables in a more mathematical sense, the scatter chart is the one we want. And if you set up your table with the axis labels like I did, it will usually recognize correctly the axis labels and it even uh, realized that I need to set up the title as the y-axis versus the x-axis. So it really did most of the work here for me. Um, now we're going to look at a few other things here. So you'll need to add a trend line to this. So to do that, you can go into the customize setting. And if this chart editor ever goes away, then you just click on the chart and you go right here to these three dots and you go to edit chart and that will bring it right back. So you go here and in order to add the trend line, you go to series and you click on trend line and then you under label, you put use equation. So it's gonna put the equation up there. And Sometimes it's nice to have the R squared value. Basically, it tells us how close the, the pattern matches a straight line. If it's a one, then it perfectly matches a straight line, which it does, because I just made up numbers. And typically, you're not going to see ones in real life, though. It will range from zero to one. So that was pretty simple. If you have a simple data set and you set it up right, it really does most of it automatically for you. Uh, but let's take a look at something a little bit more complex now. So what if I had a situation where I have two things on the y-axis? Now the y-axis, by the way, is called the dependent variable. So we have the independent variable, which is the x-axis, and we have the dependent variable, which is the y-axis. So the y-axis is supposed to respond to what's happening to the x-axis. Now, sometimes you may have two things on the y-axis. This can be a bit more confusing to the program. And so this will take a little bit more clicking buttons. Still not too difficult. So we go to insert and we go to chart. Or you can just click the uh, chart button right over here. And it may not figure out correctly what's going on this time because you've got multiple things going on. So now what you have to do is go under the setup. Well, first we're going to switch this to a, to a scatter chart. And we're going to need to manually select the X and the Y axis. So you'll notice that the X axis is labeled but the series represents the y-axis. So what I'm gonna do here is under volume, um, we're going to make sure that that's correct and it looks like it is, so it selected the volume. What it actually did here is it, it recognized the top thing as the label. Sometimes it doesn't do that correctly so then under series, we're going to, let's try removing that and getting it to do something else. So let's take this out. And so we're going to add a series and we're going to manually select the data. So if you highlight the top 
term, the pressure, it will recognize that as the heading, typically. So we go to OK. And then we could add another one as well. So we're going to do one for the temperature. So we would go up here, add series, and we're going to highlight that information. And so now we got it to do this um, in a manual way. And you'll notice that it did not actually um, figure out what the label should be here now on the axis, the Y axis. So we're gonna have to manually adjust some of those things. And by the way, if you had to do it for the X axis, you would just kind of go through the same process of clicking remove and then you could tell it what to put down for the x-axis by manually highlighting that and clicking OK. So now let's go through and let's clean up this graph because now we don't have any um, axis labels and we're going to need to tell it what to put there. So to do that, we're going to go to Chart and Axis Titles. And so here we can select the horizontal and vertical axis title. So the X axis is in milliliters and it's measuring volume. So I'm gonna put down horizontal title and I'm gonna put volume, parentheses, milliliter. You always have to put the unit in for uh, our label. So there you can see it's appeared at the bottom and now I also need to put in the vertical axis title. So I'm going to put in here, um, since we have two things on the vertical axis, that makes it a little bit tricky actually. And so typically you'd need to put two different, um, if they're two different units, you need to have another scale on the other side. Uh, so we're going to put in here the pressure, ATM, slash the temperature. Okay, so now we're going to put the chart title and make sure that's correct. So I click on chart title and you're supposed to have whatever's on the Y axis versus the X axis. So the uh, Y axis is the, the pressure and temperature. So I could put pressure and temperature or pressure slash temperature. I'll take out the units. We typically don't put those in for the chart title. And then we'll put versus the volume. And so now it fixed my chart title. It automatically put in labels. If it didn't do that automatically, I could go in here to legend and I could adjust the labels there as needed. So the other thing I need to do is put in the trend lines. So to do that, I can go into series and I can go down to trend line and I can select use equation. And I might wanna do the R squared value depending. This will give me information on how closely it matches a straight line. So there's a lot of other cool things that we can do with this as well. Uh, for instance, if we found that the axis uh, was either too big or too small for what we want, you can actually go in and manually tell it the minimum and maximum value. So for instance, if I put like 20 in there, it's going to do some weird stuff um, and kind of make things shrink down or spread out. So typically you don't want to mess with that. It's going to automatically set that up for you. But there are some cases where maybe you have really high numbers and it's starting at zero, where you might want to put in a minimum value. So for instance, if I wanted to cut this off, maybe at zero, instead of having it go into negatives, then I could manually adjust that if needed. So there's a lot of cool things that we can play around as needed. Now let's look at one other thing that we could do with this. So 
In this particular experiment, it's unlikely that you would actually be using Celsius temperature. So what we would probably be using is actually Kelvin. So another trick that you could use is the formulas that are in spreadsheets. So spreadsheets are kind of like calculators on steroids. So let's say, for example, we measured our temperature in Celsius, but we need to convert it to the Kelvin scale. Well, we could just simply put in a formula that will do all that math for us. So I could press equals, select this cell, and then to convert to Kelvin, you add 273, then press enter. And so I have a formula now that takes this value that I measured and does the math for me and converts it into Kelvin. Now, the big advantage to doing that through the spreadsheet is that now all you need to do is click this little button down here, wait till the little cross appears, click and hold and drag down. And now it replicated that same formula going all the way down. So it's doing that now, grabbing all these other numbers and following the same pattern. The other great thing about working with spreadsheets as well is now it automatically adjusted my graph uh, for the new scale, there were the new numbers. Now, of course, I would need to make sure the units are right. So it looks like my units are wrong over here. I have Celsius, so I would have to go back in there, edit that. Uh, we have our customization, chart and axis titles, go to the vertical axis titles, and we can switch that around. 